Hello, this is Warlord. And what we're going to do today is take a look at the iClone ZBrush pipeline to create morphs and characters. And we're going to be using Character Creator, iClone 6, 3D Exchange, and ZBrush. So let's go ahead and get started. What I've got here is just the default project. And with Actor selected, I'm going to reset it. And just kind of make it into a neutral character. And all we're doing with this is we just want to eventually get this over to 3D Exchange. So I'm going to shift it over to iClone. And then once it loads here, all we're going to do with it is send it over to 3D Exchange. Now there may be a better way to do that. Okay, now we have it in 3D Exchange, and what we want to do is save it. Save it as an object. I'm just going to leave it temp avatar. Okay, we've saved it. Now from there, we go over to ZBrush, and we import it. Temp avatar. And it imports it as a tool. If you're not familiar with ZBrush, you're going to have a little bit of a learning curve. But a tool is actually a model. It can be a lot of things. But it is a tool. But you just draw it out, and immediately after you draw it out, you hit the edit button. And that makes it editable. Now, what we're going to do is try to use as few brushes as possible, just so you can see what can be done. And again, this was not morphed prior to coming in. It's actually very plain. So what I'm going to do is use the move brush and probably the smooth brush, and that's probably going to be about it. So let's go ahead and let's, you right click if you haven't seen this, right click and bring this up. What I'm doing is increasing the exterior of the brush, and now I'm increasing the focal point or the interior of the brush. And I'm going to hit X, bring up symmetry, so it does the same thing on both sides. And then I'm going to come over and get my move tool. Now, if I just start crushing this together, We'll get a bit of a pinch right there and it'll get worse as we go. So before I do that, I'm going to kind of just bring it in on the front. And remember, this is going to be a stylized character. So we don't have to worry about uh, keeping it anatomically correct or anything like that. And so now I'm going to start smoothing it in. You may have other ways of doing this. There's a ton of brushes with ZBrush, but we're not going to get into everything that you can do. Now also, I'm going to hold down the shift key and you'll see that my circle turns blue. That is, what that means is, it's a smoothing brush. And we have intensity up here when we hold that down on Z. I'm going to cut it down a little bit. And this is how I'm thinning the legs down. It's just a simple pass of the smoothing brush. And I'm going to come in here and smooth down that. Now, when I, it's only when I hold down shift. I've still got my move tool otherwise. Now you're already starting to see how you could expand the chest if you wanted to, or decrease it or whatever. And get this a little smaller so I can work in a little smaller area. And all I'm doing is just sculpting it. And you just get in here and just start doing it. Remember, you've got an undo button. So you don't have to be timid with it. Now I'm going to smooth it just a little. I'm going to do the same thing, only I'm going to leave the hands alone. I'm not going to really touch the hands or the feet a whole lot, because I have found out that you can kind of mess up the envelopes, at least on the hands, especially if you extend them out. But you're getting the idea of what we can do for a stylized character just by seeing this. And this is without increasing the density of the mesh, or anything else. Okay, now let's go ahead and let's take a look and see what we can do on the head. And we'll begin, we're just using the move tool. We're not changing the vertex count, really. We're just reshaping. We're not changing the topology. We're just reshaping what's there. Now, you can make that real pointed if you want. I'm going to increase the size so I can pull the entire face out a little bit.
And this is just something that you just keep doing it as much as you want to do it, whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, as far as coming in, you can do the nose the same way. You just be careful how much you grab, how much you move. Pull out the eyes a little. And if we wanted to, we could get rid of that nose just pretty much all together. But just smoothing it out. Now you're starting to get an idea of what we can do here. And that's just, like I said, working with just the base mesh itself. So let's go ahead and let's export. And I'm going to export this as temp avatar. You can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it out. And then from there, we want to go back to 3D Exchange, select our body, and then replace mesh. I'm going to replace it, the body itself. And now here's our character. Now we're going to have some problems around the eyes and a few things like that, but that can all be fixed in Character Creator. So right now, all we really want to do is just go back to iClone. Now we can test it here to see if it works. Okay, fingers seem to be all right, things like that. But let's go ahead and let's go back into Character Creator. And we'll take a look at the head. Because we reshaped it and that changes where the eyes are and things like that. Wait for it to update. Okay. Actually, the eyes didn't come out all that bad, but, oh yeah, they did. You can see they're, they're way back in there. The easiest way to do this is make sure you're on actor there and just go to eyeball. And there's distance, there's forward and back. Now that wasn't enough forward, so let's go a little further. Up and down, eyeball enlarge, whatever you need to do. Now they're probably the teeth probably aren't going to be there either. As you can see, they're they're there, but they're way back in there. You just go in and do the same thing with teeth, and we're not going to get into that right now. But you just go in and do the same thing with teeth, move it to however you like, or you may not necessarily need it. It depends on what you're going to want to do. Okay, now let's go. Back to iClone. And let's go ahead and let's check our motion again. Let's go ahead and record some motion. Fingers look good, all that. Looks like everything's fine. That's enough to test with. We'll go back and now. Let's load an audio file. The world. Okay, now we've made the character. But what we've also done is make a morph that we can save, or that we can bring in to Character Creator. So, let's go ahead and let's save this character. And I'm just going to call it, uh, I think I'll just call it Morph 1. That's real original. And then I'm going to right click and go to Find File so I know where it is. And it opened up over here on my other screen. And now what I'm going to do is go back to Character Creator. And we can now create a new morph with this. So create more slider. I've already got some over there under Warlord. 
and I'm just going to put uh, demo caster name and we want this file and we want this file what I'm doing is just going over and getting the the address from the other one and now we're going to hit OK there's our demo test and of course we've already got we've already got it applied to him so what we would need to do if it won't reset which it may not with the way we've done it let's go back in here and let's put in a new character and then once it updates we'll test it And if you'll remember, we also reset it last time before we added it. That's also another custom morph you have. That can go along with all your other custom morphs. And of course, I'm not going to say everything's going to work great. But as you see, it's just another, just another morph for your arsenal. So that's pretty much how you do that. I hope this helps. Mm -hmm.